ladies and gentlemen, presenting Citizen Social Science Games. Would you please welcome Ms. Karen Schreier. Hi. Hello, I am Karen Schreier. And I'm so excited to be here speaking on the 10th anniversary of Themes for Change. I can't believe it. This is actually my eighth consecutive Themes for Change, which of course means that I started coming in sixth grade, right? Well, I'm here to uh, talk to you a little bit about the future of games and bringing you back to my past and actually to sixth grade, which was in the 1980s, actually. And my best friend and I were spending hours sneaking out at night. Sneaking out at night uh, because she just gotten a very exciting piece of technology. Uh, it was a telescope. Ooh. Some gremlins in the computer today. Okay, so we were using this telescope to take photos and track the movement of stars over time and to look at constellations like Cassiopeia. And we were having a ton of fun together. We were also acting as scientists. Little did we know we were joining a long-standing tradition of amateur astronomy, a practice that has just recently been started calling citizen science. How many of you have heard citizen science? Right? Real popular term right now, but actually it's really nothing new. Isaac Newton, Ben Franklin, and Charles Darwin, they were all considered citizen scientists at the time that they were practicing. In fact, most astronomy discoveries are made by amateurs, such as those members of the American Association of Variable Star Observers, which we can see here over time how many observations of variable stars they've done. In fact, they've made over 23 million observations since 1911, which accounts for 1.6 million hours of observations and 27.5 million of dollars of donated time. None of that could possibly have been done by one scientist. So in the past, amateur scientists had to on their own in the backyards collect data, but now you can join hundreds of people categorizing galaxies on something called Galaxy Zoo, which in 2007 found themselves with over one million images of galaxies. It would have taken years to classify these, so they opened up the classifications to the general public, and 70,000 were getting classified every hour. In the first year, they had classified over 50 million galaxies. <coughs> Okay, 50 million. And recently, a number of games have incorporated this categorization mechanic into their games. So you can now categorize bugs using happy moths. You can categorize birds. And you can categorize gravestones. These games work in part because of the fact that no one person or team can handle all of this data. They also work because there are some puzzles that are best solved communally by humans such as understanding protein structures in games, such as Fold It. So we've called these games citizen science games because we enlist everyday citizens to help practice science and solve large-scale, complex mysteries. But why not have citizen social science games? What if we could solve complex social problems by enlisting citizen social scientists? Why don't we have games that help solve problems by collaborating collaboratively folding social dilemmas and categorizing evolving emotions and behaviors. But it's not just about collecting data on people. This data needs to be seen in action in a dynamic system. That's where games can come in. And people analytics, Ben Weaver explains how real-time data from sources like email, coupled with environmental sensor data, help Cubis Pharmaceuticals change the layout of their office. They decided to centralize their coffee machines, which increased social interactions and led to an increase in sales. Oh great, a pharmaceutical company was able to increase sales. But what if we could reconfigure an office and schools and workplaces and families to help reduce depression? Could a game help us understand the complexities of depression? But it's not just understanding systems of data. Games need to break the systems. They need to help us break those systems so that we can make them better. 
So Nate Silver showed us that we can use complex algorithms to predict voting behavior. But how do we motivate the 57.5% of citizens that do not vote? And how do we optimize the accuracy of votes that we do collect? Could we use games to identify problems with possible voting scenarios online to create a better system and encourage voter participation? Could a game not just teach us about voting, but actually help us accurately vote? But it's not just about breaking and reshaping complex systems. We need to use the systems to take action. As part of the Open Academic Analytics Initiative, some of my colleagues at Marist mined data to better predict which students were at risk for dropping out of college. Could we use games to not only identify which students could be at risk, but to intervene appropriately? And then going back to the depression example, could we use a game to safely and appropriately identify people at risk for depression and then modify their actual game experience to reduce that the, the depression? I know that many of you have played and made earnest games. Games that taught us about topics you care about or topics that you want to teach us about. But what if the playing or making of the game itself could help solve the problem you care about or make the change you want to make? There are some inklings of this happening already. In 2005, biology researchers at Rutgers used World of Warcraft to help better simulate epi epidemics by looking at player response to a virtual blood plague created by Blizzard accidentally. This helped researchers better, better model epidemics shaping government policy and giving insight into our understanding of the social complexities of epidemics. Likewise, the Sudan game out of USC's Game Pipe Lab invites participants to help simulate peace in the Sudan. Participants play as tribe members with different perspectives and they need to collaboratively figure out the best sequence of events that could lead to peace among the tribes. And then finally, shout out to me, uh, my own research on Fable 3, we uh, looked at ethical decisions in the game, and we tried to understand why participants were deciding to drain or maintain a lake. By looking at how participants thought through this decision, perhaps we can simulate policy and education related to environmental conservation. So, can we actually do this? Can we actually make citizen social science games? And if so, how do we create them? Besides just creating a good, fun game, here are some principles that I hope will guide us. Principle number one, it should not just be about crowdsourcing social data. Our players should be acting like actual social scientists, practicing with authentic situations, tools, and scenarios. Galaxy Zoo works because participants are actually looking at real galaxies. Fold it works because people are folding simulated authentic protein structures. All of these people are acting like real scientists when they're playing the game. Principle two, social data and stars are similar because they both change positions over time. We need to find ways to capture and recapture social data at different moments in time. And understand that even if you ask the same question twice, Getting two different answers does not necessarily mean that your data or systems are inaccurate. Principle number three. Participants cannot contribute data in a bubble. Instead, they need to be playing within a dynamic system. These games need to allow participants to work together to push the limits of, break apart, evaluate, and rethink social systems of the game and the world it simulates. Players also need to be exposed to different perspectives and moved out of their cognitive comfort zone. Complex problem solving requires cognitive diversity. And finally, principle four. Game makers need to open up these games, not just to modding, but make their data and their design decisions transparent and freely available so that we can all benefit from it in appropriate ethical ways. So let's go back to those stars again. A telescope can bring us closer to seeing a star, but it's the people that can help us understand it. A game may bring us closer to a social problem, but ultimately, we need to solve it. 
So can games help us become amateur stargazers and people gazers? After all, says Carl Sagan, we are all star stuff. We humans are the part of the universe that can observe itself. And likewise, I believe that the Games for Change community should be the part of the game universe that observes itself. So I hope that you will all join me in becoming social citizen social scientists. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why it ended, but thank you. <laughs> gmail.com and I'd love to talk to you more about citizen social science games. Thank you. Oh, yeah. One question. So uh, what are your plans for when it gets controversial, which will inevitably happen? I, my, my plan is to make a game to uh, unpack the controversy. <laughs> I hope it gets controversial. That'll get, get people talking about it more. The more we get into a problem, the more controversy we find. Yes. Is there a game you're working on right now? There, there is no specific game I'm working on, but I would love to start working on them. I've, I've been doing research in games. I've been doing research in uh, Fable 3 and also in Way, uh, Games for Change winner last year. But uh, I have not been specifically working on one of these games yet, but I would love to try. Anyone else? Yes. You're right. I mean, it, okay. So I think what you're asking is, how is this game going to happen? So is this an anonymous game? Is it again? It depends on the set of problems that you're posing, right? So and then hopefully you're thinking ethically, right? You're thinking about the consequences of any kind of surveillance and the way that you're inviting participants to join you in the game, right? So you have to rethink privacy. You have to rethink issues of surveillance. You have to rethink issues of consent when you're doing that kind of research. So how are those participants coming together? But you know, we, ha we have an analogy in citizen science games, right? There's hundreds of people working on these large scale complex science problems. Why couldn't we do the same with a large scale social science problem, like the kinds of problems that we're grappling with today? Well, thank you for thank you for coming. We got your value right here. Now get zero percent APR financing for sixty months. Now our buyers will call for the full credit funds. Sixty months at sixteen sixty seven per month. One thousand finance regardless. Take one detail delivery from dealer stock by seven eight fifteen.